Hawks won the season series 3-1 over Philly. Joel Embiid only played in one of those, but the 76ers still lost. Game one is tomorrow, as in Saturday, 6 Eastern on ESPN. First of all, I love that start time. I just have to say, the 6 p.m. start time, yes. and then the second I game is like 8.45. I agree with that. Thank you, ESPN and ABC, for that. All right, Legs, you're up first. Seriously. How worried should the Knicks be about this Philly team? And Ex Joel Embiid. Extremely worried. Look. But is Embiid healthy? Listen, well, we'll get to that. Okay. But come on, man. Let's not take it too far now. Okay, we saw Embiid the other night against Miami. Now all of a sudden, it's this stone-cold lock, foregone conclusion. Give me a break. Listen, I want to say, first of all, when Joel Embiid came back from this injury and he played those, what, five, six games before he kind of re-injured himself there at the end of the year, when I saw him, then I said they're going to the conference final. They, if they can avoid Boston's bracket, which they did, that was where I was on the record of saying that. That's the biggest threat to the Boston Celtics in the East. Then I saw Joel Embiid against the Miami Heat, and I said, "Wait a second, is this conditioning? Is it physical limitations? A combination of the both? Is it anxiety? What is going on? Because he is a shell of the guy that I just watched a couple of weeks ago." So having said that, clearly now there's a problem for the Sixers, and to, I actually flipped my pick. I picked the Sixers to win the series. If they were going to get the Knicks, I went on the air this morning and said I'm picking the Knicks in seven games. Seven games, Stephen A. Even if Joel Embiid looks exactly how he looked against the Heat, I think this is a seven-game series because, number one, he still is going to have an impact, and you have another star. They got Tyrese Maxey, and anybody trying to deflect from Tyrese Maxey right now and say, oh, you know, he's young, how can you put that kind of pressure on him? Stop. The guy is an all-star, 26 points a game, had three 50-point games this year. Why can't we ask more of Tyrese Maxey, who will be the third-best offensive player in this series? So they've got another star player that the Knicks are going to have to deal with, and I think Maxey's going to show up in a big way. I have no doubt about Brunson, but I still think, regardless of how Embiid looked the other night, this is a formidable team, Stephen A. This isn't some offensive juggernaut in the New York Knicks that are going to run roughshod over the Philadelphia 76ers all of a sudden, regardless of how Embiid looked. They should be very concerned because they still have Tyrese Maxey, and any way you shape it, this is going to be a long series decided by a handful of possessions in some of these fourth quarters. <sighs> Ladies and gentlemen, uh, you listen to a gentleman by the name of Tim Legler, 11-year career in the National Basketball Association, born in the District of Columbia, played college basketball in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and lived there for many, many years thereafter. He's highly sensitive to the locals, and he, go, he, go, he ain't going to just give up on them like that. I understand. I understand where it's coming from. I see my man Wendy there waiting to chime in with his orange and blue on, because he knows. What's going on right now? He feels the momentum. He knows what's coming down the pike. This is a different day, baby. Let me tell you something right now. Six is going down. Six is going down. Now, listen, I will openly confess to you that part, a significant part of the, the confidence that I exude has an awful lot to do with Joe LMB not being out. The Joel Embiid that I saw the other night against Miami, the Joel Embiid I saw grabbing his knee before the game even began, who was virtually immobile, immobile throughout the game. Hit two big threes in the fourth quarter, ended up scoring, uh, you know, 11 points in the fourth quarter, finishing with respectable numbers like 23 and 15. Joel Embiid is phenomenal, no doubt. And if he were 100%, I wouldn't be this confident, but he ain't. He's far from it. And when I think about the physicality of the New York Knicks, particularly defensively, when I think about the defensive wizardry of the great Tom Thibodeau, okay, who has proven something to me this year, I also love the fact that they've had the injuries. The Mitchell Robinsons of the world. Even Jalen Brunson missed a few games. Of course, OG Ananobi missed a few games. I think they were like 13 and 14 or 14 and 15. I don't remember. Without OG Ananobi, but 20 and 3 with him in the lineup. Wendy, I'm looking at it. Legs, I'm looking at it, and I'm saying, excuse me, you go after somebody like Embiid two ways. You either run up and down the court, which the Knicks don't do because their pace of play is one of the slower paces in the league, or you get physical with them, and you make him fight for everything because ultimately attrition kicks in. And we know 
that when that happens, it ain't going to be no Nicholas Platoon with six threes. And <laughs> they ain't happening, okay? Somebody else going to have to step up. And I'm willing to bet my money it ain't going to be that way. Not only do I got the Knicks winning this series, it ain't going seven. I got them in five. I got him in what? five, Tim. Like the five oh games. Oh my That's goodness! Right. That's what I said. I got oh him in five. You took let, it too let, far. Let me tell you something else. Let me tell you right now. You're talking about the the Philadelphia 76ers winning eight straight. Well, last time I checked, you know Brunson's got 30 plus and seven straight, and and nine of the last ten. Okay, averaging over 30, not to mention assisting and getting people in foul trouble. Don't diminish the value of him being able to pull that off. The Villanova boys with him and DiVincenzo, with Josh Hart rebounding and scoring as well. I'm just looking at it, and I'm saying, you know something? It's a new day, baby. I ain't going to be like, we here, we here, we here. I ain't going to do that yet. But I'm telling you right now, we going to win this series. We going to win this series. And that eight-game winning streak Philadelphia was on, it ends tomorrow night. It ends. Floor is yours, Wendy. <laughs> All right, so good news and bad news for the Knicks fans. Let's start with the bad news. The bad news is you have the two seed, but you don't really have the two seed because this is not a seven seed that you're seeing. The 40 games that the Sixers have played this year with Joel Embiid, they are 32-8. and eight. That's not a seven seed. So as hard as you worked out the whole regular season, your draw is not fair. Let's just start with that. Here's the good news. The good news is, is that this team is absolutely designed for playoff basketball. No matter what you want to say about Tom Thibodeau, this guy plays his games throughout the whole season like their playoff games. That's why the Knicks came into last year's series with the Cavs and looked like they were ready to go because they have been primed. And I believe that the Knicks especially on their home court in the garden where they are a great team and that atmosphere will be charged, will be ready to go for the playoffs. And I think that's an advantage for them. But you're right, Stephen A. When you watch Joel Embiid laboring up and down on that leg, your instantaneous reaction is run him. But the Knicks don't do that. They're the slowest team in the league. Jalen Brunson pounds the ball. Nobody dribbled the ball more in the NBA this season. We can track that more than Jalen Brunson. And no one's going to dribble the ball in this series more than Jalen Brunson. And that slow down effect does favor the Sixers. And I will say this. I know Embiid looked bad the other night, but we have seen Embiid bounce back. You think he's uh, readjusting that knee, and next thing you know, he goes off. So don't bank on that. If I were you, I would bank on him being great in this series and believe that the Knicks, because of how they're built, and how they've played throughout the stretch run are, can still beat them, even with them be playing this well. Well, listen, you can say that. You know, I feel you on that. I mean, because obviously with the greatness of a of a Joel Embiid, and let's not forget Tyrese Maxey when we talked yeah. about greatness, because he is great. I get all of that. But I'm going to stand on what I'm saying about their defensive tenacity, what they've been and how they've been transformed since OG and Anobi arrived. And I'm going to think about that along with the great MVP caliber play of a Jalen Brunson along with the shooting of a Dante DiVincenzo who did at 39% a clip from three-point range this season. I just like what I'm seeing right now. I'm looking at what I'm looking at, and I'm saying if the Philadelphia 76ers are going to get at them, they're going to need Embiid to look a hell of a lot better than he did against Miami to do it. I can't see that happening because I think the Knicks' physicality will rule the day. And by the way, Molly brought up the fact that I was wrong because I picked Miami to beat Philadelphia. If Jimmy Butler hadn't gotten hurt with his MCL, I think they still would have won that game. Philly wouldn't even be in I didn't bring up that game. you were wrong. I just pointed out that I was I was, I was right. I was shocked I when I found out, out you I was, made that pick, Stephen I was right, I couldn't Stephen believe a. you picked the Miami. Listen, Listen Miami, you saw my, how Miami looked in the first half, but Jimmy Butler got hurt. Hey, Steve, Wendy. Tim, I need some percentages before we go to break. I just want to know how confident you are, Stephen A. Smith, in your Knicks. Like 80% confident? 90! 90! Aggressive? Wow, aggressive. Why is your lip curling a little as you say it? Ain't like, curling? It's, I'm oh, here. Oh, okay. I'm okay. here. Even okay. by your standards. 90%. Wow. Even by your standards, this is out.